as far as the scientists are concerned, they have a different philosophy. They have a different approach. This approach is known as the falsification test. The scientists, they are so busy. There are so many new theories coming about, they don't have time to analyze it. They say, if you have a theory, first give us a way to prove your theory wrong. If you come about with a new concept, first give us a way, show us a way how to prove your theory wrong. Albert Einstein, in the beginning of the 20th century, he proposed certain things. How does the universe work? Along with it, he gave three ways how to prove his theory wrong. The scientists, they examined for six years, and then they agreed it was right. Now, anyone who gives a falsification test, it deserves to be heard. It doesn't mean the person is great or the work is great. It may be right, may be wrong. But anyone who gives the falsification test, it deserves to be heard. There are innumerable falsification tests mentioned in the Quran. You want to prove the Quran wrong? It is very easy, you try it out. Very easy. There are some falsification tests which was meant only for that time when the Quran was revealed. Some is meant for today, some it will be meant till the last day. I'll just mention about four or five because of lack of time. One very good example is about the story of Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab, he was the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was given this nickname, Abu Lahab, the father of the flame, and he was one of the staunchest enemies of the Prophet. Whenever he saw anyone speaking with the Prophet, he used to wait. The moment the Prophet left, he used to go to the man and ask him, what did the Prophet say? Did he say black? It is white. Did he say day? No, it is night. He used to speak the opposite. He was one of the staunchest enemies of the Prophet. He went out of the way, he even lied many a times just to prove the Prophet wrong. Now there is a surah in the Quran by the name Surah Lahab, chapter number 111, which all of us know very well. It's recited many times in the Salah, Tabba, Tada, Abi, Lahab, Yuvatab, etc. In this surah it is mentioned that Abu Lahab and his wife, they will burn in the hellfire, indicating they will never become Muslims. They will never ever accept Islam. Now this surah was revealed about 10 years before the death of Abu Lahab. When this surah was revealed, only thing Abu Lahab had to do was accept Islam and the Quran would have been proved wrong. Not actually. Many of his companions who were his friends in the span of 10 years they accepted Islam. Abu Lahab, later on after 10 years, he died. 10 years he had time. The Prophet was constantly reminding him for 10 years, you accept Islam? and the Qur'an would be proved wrong. So easy. Only thing he had to do was say, I am a Muslim. Finish. Not that he had to behave like a Muslim. Not that he had to offer Salah. Only thing he had to say, I am a Muslim, and finish. The Qur'an would have been proved wrong. So easy. Very easy. He had lied many times against the Prophet. He had to lie once again, and the Qur'an would have been proved wrong. But he could not, because the author of the Quran is Almighty God. He knows that Abu Lahab will never accept Islam. Falsification test. Ten years. 